Got to play this for you. This is something that popped up. This is a nurse. So this was a, we've seen a lot of the misinformation coming from Israel. We've seen a lot of the information coming from the IDF where they claim something is, you know, trust us. This is the evidence. This is the evidence that you need to see. And it's something like a 3D computer illustration or it's a walkthrough of a hospital basement with even a World Health Organization um, medical device in the basement. So clearly it was used for medical purposes. There's diapers and bottles. And they say, oh, my gosh, hostages were held here. And it's a children's hospital. So there's a lot of They show us a tunnel. It's an elevator shaft. They show us another tunnel. They wouldn't actually show us inside of that tunnel. So there's a lot of this. Um, the They're just telling us, trust us. This is the evidence. And the evidence just ends up being piss poor. Well, here's one that ended up being really, really piss poor. This is one of the nurses who gave testimony saying, you will not believe what Hamas is using this hospital for. And I need to speak out. I have to speak out uh, so that people know what is really going on in these hospitals. Do we have the video? Let's play this video. Yeah, Allah, I can't believe I'm doing this. But the world has to know, has to know what Hamas is making here. They're taking over the entire hospital. They're taking over the fuel, the medicine. I have nothing to treat with. I had to fix a fracture for a five, a five-year-old boy without morphine because Hamas took it to themselves. Ya Allah, please, please, if you, if you hear me, please leave, run away. Don't stay here, please. Ya Alam, ya Nas, it's long, it's long, it's long, it's shifa. So that video circulated online and many pointed to it and said, see, see, uh, this is what Hamas does inside of these hospitals. Again, really wanting to uh, go after hospitals. When was this actually posted? This video was um, because I want to say it was a bit ago. This. okay. so this was just a few. This was a few days ago. So they're saying, um, you know, get out, move, go. This is what they're doing in these hospitals. It turns out. This woman is an Israeli actress. She's actually kind of a well-known Israeli actress. Um, The way that this came out was first this community note came out. These several doctors and nurses from Shaifa Hospital stated that she never worked there before and they never have seen her at the hospital. In addition to her Israeli accent, that is clearly obvious when she speaks Arabic due to her inability to pronounce certain letters. So... um, That first came out, and then people spotted her, and they recognized her, and they realized that this is actress Hannah uh, Abutbul, which is an Israeli actress. So this is the kind of propaganda. I mean, when the propaganda is so blatant like this, and it's a lie, how can you ever trust anything the IDF says? How can you ever trust anything Israel says? And the bombs in the background that obviously sounded so fake. How, How could you trust anything they say? When so much of what they say is just blatant, obvious lie or it's gaslighting, it's telling you this is what it is, and yet they're not showing you any real evidence of what that thing is. They're saying, no, trust us, this is what this is. This this, this right here, see this rope, this string? This was used to tie up a hostage. See this curtain? This was used for uh, when they, they they must have used this to film videos with the hostages, even though they're, they're not showing us any of these videos. I mean, it's just... It's it's getting almost like satire at this point <laughs> with the type of um, the type of proof that they're putting out there. And ultimately, the goal, if they're lying and they're putting out this essentially satire, this comedy in order to get us to believe that people need to go and that the hospitals are dangerous. I mean, the the IDF spokesperson walking around showing us how dangerous the basement of a hospital was not showing us any tunnels, not showing us a command center. They did a whole 3D rendering of a command center only to show us a basement in a hospital that had medical equipment installed by the World Health Organization, meaning it was a functioning basement for medical care, and then saying, see, see, the terrorists are are terrible. They came out today, the IDF came out today saying, oh, the Hamas command center's moved. So now it's it's near the hospital, but it's 250 feet below the hospital. I mean, just more nonsense of, okay, well, it was there, but now they moved it. 
So then why did you bomb the hospital? Why did you evacuate all the people? Why have you allowed patients to die in this hospital? Ultimately, they're trying to get people to move. They're trying to get people to move to southern Gaza so that they can annex the northern part of that strip. They will not give that northern part of the strip back. They won't. Mark my words, guys. Thank you very much. Our final witness is also using an assumed name. And again, we ask uh, our friends in the media to respect the need to, for her to protect her family. And we finally call on Naira to testify. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, my name is Naira, and I just came out of Kuwait. My mother and I were in Kuwait on August 2nd for a peaceful summer holiday. My older sister had a baby on July 29th, and we wanted to spend some time in Kuwait with her. I only pray that none of my 10th grade classmates had a summer vacation like I did. I may have wished some time that I could be an adult, that I could grow up quickly. What I saw happen to the children of Kuwait and to my country has changed my life forever. It has changed the life of all Kuwaitis, young and old. We are children no more. <coughs> my sister, with my five-day-old nephew, traveled across the desert to safety. There is no milk available for the baby in Kuwait. They barely escaped when their car was stuck in the desert, desert sand, and help came from Saudi Arabia. I stayed behind and wanted to do something for my country. The second week after an invasion, I volunteered, volunteered at the al Hospital with 12 other women who wanted to help as well. I was the youngest volunteer. The other women were from 20 to 30 years old. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators. took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. <laughs> it was horrifying. I could not help but think of my nephew, who, if born premature, might have died that day as well. After I left the hospital, some of my friends and I distributed flyers condemning the Iraqi invasion until we were warned we might be killed if the Iraqi saw us. If the Iraqi saw us. The Iraqis have destroyed everything in Kuwait. They, they stripped the supermarkets of food, the pharmacies of medicine, the factories of medical supplies, supplies ransacked their houses, and tortured neighbors and friends. I saw and talked to a friend of mine after his torture and released by the Iraqis. He is 22, but he looked as though he could have been an old man. The Iraqis dunked his head into a swimming pool until he almost drowned. They pulled out his fingernails and applied electric shock to sensitive private parts of his body. He was lucky to survive. If an Iraqi soldier was found dead in a neighborhood, they burned to the ground all the houses in, in the general vicinity and would not let firefighters come until, the, until the only ash and rubble was left. The Iraqis were making fun of President Bush and verbally and physically abusing my family and me on our way out of Kuwait. We only did so because life in Kuwait became unbearable. They have forced us to hide, burn, and destroy any, everything identifying our country and our government. I want to emphasize that Kuwait is our mother and the Emir our father. We repeated, we repeated this on the roofs of our houses in Kuwait until the Iraqis began shooting at us. And we shall repeat it again. I am glad I am 15, old enough to remember Kuwait before Saddam Hussein destroyed it, and young enough to rebuild it. Thank you. Mayor, I thank you. Let me thank all of our witnesses. Uh, we've uh, passed eight years in the existence of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus. We've had scores of hearings about human rights abuses throughout the world. 
And I know my co-chairman, Tom Lantos, will join me in telling you that we have never heard in all this time, in all circumstances, a record of inhumanity and brutality and sadism as the ones that the witnesses have given us today. I don't know how the people of the civilized countries of this world can fail to do everything within their power to remove this scourge from the face of our earth. And the witnesses, by providing to us eyewitness accounts and reports detailing the conduct of the Iraqi soldiers under the command of Saddam Hussein have done a great service to their country and to ours and to all countries of the world who must join together and take whatever action may be necessary to free the people of Kuwait from this aggression and brutality. Tom Lantos.